Hey everybody, now we're going to look at the automated market maker decentralized exchange liquidity pool smart contract. So first let's start with the dependencies. So first we're going to need to define this uh, MIT license and we're also going to need to define the version of the Solidity uh, compiler here. And here we actually import the ERC20 standard from Open Zeppelin. And here we're actually defining the instance of the contract here. So ERC20 from this contract, it's another instance name. And for the constructor, we're gonna input chain link and link the name and the uh, symbol for it. So now let's look at the uh, custom contract that was built for this to do the swaps. So we're gonna have some initial values here. So the constant product from the bonding curve and these two variables here to track the balances for the smart contract liquidity pool. This is the address for the ERC20 token on Rankin B for Chainlink. And finally, this is the liquidity pool address that will be used for checks and we'll discuss that in a moment. But here, so basically this is us creating an instance of the ERC20 contract with the use of an object, so to speak. So it's, it's object oriented programming in a sense where basically when we do this, we'll have access to all these different functions. So it's very convenient if we want to reuse other contracts for other functionalities that are, already exist, save time to make things simple. So here we just pass in the chain link Rankin B uh, ERC20 address to fully tell it, hey, this is the exact contract for what token we're uh, going to be using for this. Okay, so now we have our modifier here with the liquidity pool address. So here we're actually checking if the person that's currently connected to the contract is the liquidity pool provider. So if this isn't true, then whatever function that we try to enter will not execute. And that is reflected here with the underscore. So basically this is like, hey, check this condition. And if it's okay, then we're going to continue into the function that we are trying to access. So that's what this underscore means. Don't, don't overthink it. It's, that's all it does. It just says, Hey, continue if this is true. So now we're actually going to create the liquidity pool. So to do this, you have to be the liquidity pool provider. Here's a modifier that we defined up here. We're going to see, Hey, are you the correct person to do this based off of your Ethereum wallet address? And if that's true, then you can do this. So first we're going to check if there's a pool that already exists by checking if the constant product is zero. We're going to check if you are giving four way at the moment. And here, okay. So the token is a little bit more complicated. So first we're going to see if you have enough tokens in your wallet and if you have approved the transfer of those tokens to this contract. So the, the second part of this is it's just a safety check for tokens so that no one, just keeps draining tokens from you and stealing them from you. So this is a this is a check that it didn't have from before, but you have to do it. So again, this is like the the idea here is basically we we're just trying to double check in the uh, contract if we have an error, so to speak, because I was kind of messing this up from before and figuring I was uh, wondering like, okay, why is this not working? and getting like generic compiler errors, so to speak, because sometimes I would forget to do this or I would put in the wrong address. So here I made it very clear. So if the compiler doesn't like it, then it'll tell you, hey, listen, you need to allow these tokens to be sent. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do this. So now it's so the compiler will be very clear with you now if you try to do this and you haven't done it. So that's that's why I added this. It's very, very convenient. And now once we check all that and it's true, then we will take the tokens from the liquidity provider and send them to the smart contract address here with the amount. And then here we're going to update the balances. So we got the way from here. The message dot value is kind of the way you send way or Ethereum to a smart contract based off of its, but you have to make the function payable. Otherwise the smart contract will be like, Hey, why are you paying me if you didn't make this payable so that you don't accidentally send funds to a smart contract that aren't needed. And we're going to update the balances. So this is the way or Ethereum balance here. 
and this is the chain link balance here. So here is where we calculate the bonding curve constant product based off of the bounces of way and chain link. So once that's all said and done, we have created our liquidity pool. Very exciting. So now we're actually going to do the swaps. So first, again, we have to make it payable because we're sending it way. So we're going to be giving way to get link. We're going to check, and this is just like a safety measure here to make the contract simple. So we're going to see if we have four way and four link for the math. And here we have the bonding curve again. We're going to see if the amount is a, is um, equal to the bonding curve amount calculated to do the swap. So basically the math is this. So it's the constant product over the amount of link in the smart contract already minus the link that we want to take out minus the way that we already have. So since we want to take out two uh, chain link, we need at least eight way, right? So basically we need to give in four way to get eight because we already have four. So once that's all said and done, we can transfer the tokens from the smart contract to the current trader. And again, so there's no modifier here, so anyone can do the trade, but the liquidity pool provider is the only one that can access this. So the person will get their link by sending their way first, and then the balances will, will be updated. So this is a little um, trick, but basically I tried doing this with um, address.this, and that actually caused a bug. So the way this works for this, for this condition, I was checking the message.value and the address this dot balance for this work contract that's that's a problem because it'll actually auto update so to speak so the values will change as you're trying to check them it's a it's a really nasty bug so the way you avoid this is just by using constant variables that are static so they're not going to update automatically like this is set already it's not going to change with message dot value so that's why that's there you know um and now finally we're going to swap some link for way so Again, here, this is just a safety measure like this. We're going to see if you have two link and eight way. So we're going to want to balance it back to this initial state, four and four, four link, four way, right? So here's the bonding curve again. So to do this, we need to put in two link and take out four way. And this is calculated here. So it's, the math is the same, it's just you move around the variables. So the constant product over the way that already exists minus the way that we want minus the link that's already in the contract. So again, you have to do this allowance with the ERC20 token. Otherwise, the contract's not going to know that you have authorization and it'll deny it. So you have to put the safety check in again and do it through the ERC20 contract. So once that's all said and done, you will get... Well, first, you, we'll, we'll take the tokens from the person once since they allowed it based off of the bonnet curve amount. And we're gonna pay out the, the four way to do the swap. And then we're gonna update the bounces. So finally, the last part of this is the liquidity provider. So let's say that someone has been doing all this trading and then the liquidity provider is like, okay, I want my liquidity back. So again, we have this modifier here to see if you are the liquidity provider so that random people just don't run off with your way and your link. So this is true. If you have the right address connected to the contract, you're going to get all the way and you're going to get all the chain link out of the contract and then everything will be reset. So yeah, so that's, that's about it. So hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys have any questions, please let me know and I'll try to answer them. So now we're actually going to test the smart contract. So first we're going to create the liquidity pool. So I'm going to allow the ERC20 tokens to be sent to the swap contract. So let's try that. Okay, so MetaMask will pop up. We're gonna confirm. Okay. So we're just gonna wait for that confirmation on RankedD. Okay, confirmation is here. And let's see, so now we're going to send four way and I'm just going to double check that we have the liquidity pool address selected. Yep. So we should be good. 
Okay, good. Confirm. Okay, so now we're gonna see the liquidity pool. See if it, we got four way and four link. Disclaimer, the link takes a couple seconds to show up. But we should get the way pretty quickly. Yeah, so the way's here. We just have to wait a couple seconds for the chain link to show up. But I think in here, it knows that it's here. So it's it's already known in the contract itself. It just takes a second and rank of E. So we're just gonna wait. Check again. Okay, still waiting. Still waiting. Just gonna wait. Oh, and there it is. There's the there's the chain link ERC twenty tokens, even though it's not exactly it's on the ERC. 20 standard for the contract. Let me check the balance here. So, okay, four, good. So now we're actually gonna do some swaps. So now I'm gonna switch to the trader contract. Sorry, not contract, but uh, the trader wallet. So now anyone can interact with this. So if I try to go here, it'll tell you, hey, you can't touch the funds because you're the trader, right? And if I try to take out all the funds, hey, you can't take out the funds because you're just you're just a trader. You're not the liquidity provider, so that that works for the modifier. So now we're gonna do the swap. So we're gonna give it four way, and we should get four link out of it. So we should get eight and two in the contract balances after we do this. So let's check that. So we're gonna do the swap. Okay, confirm. Just wait for that to go through. Okay, check the balances here because they're a little faster, eight and two. Let's check it on Etherscan, eight, we should get two. Okay, good, we got two. And finally, we're going to trade the link for way. So now I'm gonna put in two way for the trader. That we want to give to the contract. Confirm. Okay. So we just gotta wait. And here we go. So now this should rebalance everything to four and four after we do this. Just gotta wait. Okay. I didn't get a notification. Okay, now the notification came, but yep. So I went through. And now we're gonna try to take out all the way. So we have to be a liquidity provider again. Actually, wait, let me show that you could do the swap again just to show, just to show that off. So we're gonna get eight and two again, just to show that it could work continuously. And then I'm just gonna take out all the way and link out of the liquidity pool after I test that. So it should take a moment. Okay, eight and two. Okay, so now we're going to say, hey, I'm the liquidity pool provider. I want to take out all my funds that I put in so I have the right to, right? So now we're gonna withdraw everything. And after this, there should be no chain link and there should be no way in the liquidity pool smart contract balance. So this will take a second, Well, oh, that was quick. And uh, yeah, so let's just double check. And there's no link and there's no way. So there you go. There's the demo. Hope you guys enjoyed.